Hi, it's Mike with AskTractorMike.com. Well, I've got a viewer letter today that I'm going to answer that deals with a common problem among tractor owners, and that is you have a tractor and you have an attachment that needs hydraulic flow, and there's not a good way of getting the hydraulic flow from the tractor to the attachment. And then I'm going to give you kind of the basics today, so if you ever run into this problem, you'll know what some of the options are. And then I'm going to invite you, if you're a, a former technician or you've got a lot of hydraulic experience and you know the answer to this viewer's question and can put it in the comments down below and help them out, uh, that would be great. Because I'm going to tell you what I know, but I don't know enough to really guide them in the right direction. But let's, first, let's get to the letter. And the letter comes from Jason. And Jason says, I'm wondering what knowledge you have about PTO pumps. I do not have rear remotes and want to start using a pulp loader and trailer with my tractor. Not sold on the Chinese made with their own power pack that circulate hydraulic fluid. Have seen numerous times a PTO hydraulic pump. Think this would work in the application I'm referring to. Cheers, Jason. Well, Jason, I'm going to tell you what I know about PTO pumps and I know what you're trying to do with uh, the machine. Now, I didn't know what that machine, a, 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 a pulp trailer, I had no idea what that was, so I had to Google it. But here's what it looks like, and, and what it does basically is takes logs uh, that are um, light, not, not logging type of logs, and lifts them and puts them on a trailer, and it uses hydraulic flow to uh, uh, lift them up and, and position them on the load. So what Jason's trying to do is mount one of these on a tractor, and of course, if you're new to tractors, you may not know, a lot of these smaller tractors do not have rear remotes. And this is what a rear remote is, and this is a, a coupler on the back of a tractor, and you can see, they come in sets of twos, you can see they're one set, uh, which is, is flow in and flow out, controlled by a lever on the operator area, or two sets, or three sets, or up to four sets, each one is in a set of two. So one set is two couplers, two holes to plug hydraulic hoses into. So a lot of your smaller tractors do not have these and if you've got one and you want remotes you can still get them. While the tractor is a new model the manufacturer will have that kit that puts hydraulics on the tractor uh, that the dealer can order and they can install it or you can install it. Usually it requires taking the back wheel of the tractor off and if you've got fluid in the tires that's kind of a hassle. I would recommend having the dealer put it on but it's it'll get you two ports and they can stack them up to like I said three or four ports on on many tractors but once the tractor is obsolete those kits that put those hydraulics on there generally the manufacturers will divvy them up and put them in the parts department and so if you want a kit you've got to order each individual part you've got to order the couplers on the back the hoses that run up the levers and everything and then it becomes really expensive to do and out of the reach of most folks uh, you just can't justify the cost of it so if that's you uh, you're like Jason and he's looking for another way to power a hydraulic implement and he's asking about PTO pumps well let's talk about PTO pumps my first experience with PTO pumps or hydraulic pumps that were kind of remote, uh, they weren't part of the tractor, uh, was looking at the older tractors. Some of the earliest tractors made either had hydraulic systems that weren't capable of supporting a front end loader, or they ha didn't have enough flow, or there wasn't any way of tapping into the system, uh, something like that. And, and still, there were people wanting to put a front end loader on the tractor, and, and there wasn't a good way of doing it. And I'm going to give you an example. When I started my career uh, in the tractor business, I was with Agco. And Agco and Massey Ferguson, Agco owns Massey Ferguson. Uh, they're all part of the same company. And Massey had a tractor that they sold called a 231. And a 231 was a basic tractor. I mean, no bells and whistles on it. No remote hydraulics. No, uh, it had power steering. And that's about it. It had a 8x2 crash box transmission, non-synchronized. But a lot of folks, because they were cheap, and when I first started selling them, I think they were under $10,000 for a 34-horse tractor, two-wheel drive, and we sold tons of them. They were really good little tractors, very, very reliable. Uh, I think the ones, most of the ones I sold were built in Poland, and a good tractor with a Perkins engine, a great engine, 
and so we sold we sold several of them. Well, you could get a front end loader for a Massey 231, and when you bought that front end loader, you had really two ways, and and one of those ways had two ways, of of plumbing it in so you got hydraulic flow. The cheapest and most common was you could put a diverter valve on top of the transmission and tap into the three-point hydraulic system. And so you had a, a switch where you could go from one to the other. You could either run the uh, three-point on the back or you could run the front end loader on the front. And that worked. It was just a switch where you diverted the flow of oil from the, the three-point to the loader. But the problem was if you were as a lot of people did, moving hay bales around, and you put a bale on the back, and then you lifted it up with your uh, diverter valve, with your three-point, and then turned your diverter valve to run the front loader, and then picked up a, a bale with that, and then started to drive to the house, a lot of times there'd be a little leak down in that diverter valve, and you'd look behind you, and the bale wasn't back there anymore. It had all come down and left the bale somewhere back where you'd been. So, so that wasn't a great setup. Uh, the other problem with it is uh, Massey Ferguson uh, 231 uh, had plenty of hydraulics to lift, a, as one of my dealers said, it'll lift a house, but it had very low flow. It only had 4.4 gallons per minute of flow. And one of my dealers said it will lift a house, it'll take all day to get it up in the air because hydraulic flow dictates how fast a loader will work and a 4.4 gallon per minute loader is going to go really slow. So that wasn't the greatest system either. On a Massey 231, you could put a PTO pump on it. And a PTO pump is a hydraulic pump that mounts on the back on the PTO. And the front end loaders that we sold that came from Massey actually had in the loader arms a hydraulic oil sump. So what the trick was, was you could load that up, it, was, it, was, it would hold oil, load that up with oil, and then put your PTO pump on, and it had a filter built into the system, and that would run the loader, and then your, your three-point, you could use your three-point with bales, and your loader with bales at the same time, and it was no problem. And you had much, much more flow. A lot of them were 10 gallons per minute or more, and 10 gallons per minute is, is plenty fast on a loader. So that was my earliest experience with a PTO pump. Now the problem with that, of course, is if you want to hook a bush hog onto your 231 Massey and you've got a PTO pump on the back, it didn't work very good. They also had a front-mounted hydraulic pump that you could mount on the front of the tractor. There was a plug up there that you could take off and, and there was a, a factory available PTO pump. It really wasn't a PTO pump, but it was a front mounted hydraulic pump that went on, I think, on the front of the crankshaft of the engine, and uh, that could power your loader. The problem with that, of course, is it's, it's running all the time. There's no way to shut it off. With a PTO pump, you can turn it on or off. So that's kind of my experience with PTO pumps. And when I started working in the dealership world, we came in uh, to another PTO pump that I, I thought was awesome. And that is, if you're buying a backhoe, you can either plumb into your tractor's hydraulic system to run the backhoe, and, and backhoes need continual flow going back to the, back to the backhoe. Uh, so what you do with your tractor is you're, you're running it at PTO-rated engine speed, and you're using the hydraulic pump, which is sending oil back to the backhoe continually through the system, and then there's a return line that goes back to sump, and you're using your backhoe, and you're using your tractor's hydraulic pump to power that. There's a problem with that. That heats up the hydraulics. It's quite a bit of wear and tear on the tractor all day long with a hydraulic pump to sit in a fixed position and, and run that backhoe all day long. And not all small tractors' hydraulic pumps are really designed for that. And so there's a lot of wear and tear on the tractor. Good, good uh, service business for the dealer, but not the best on the tractor. So the solution to that at the dealership I worked at, we tried to talk everyone who bought a backhoe into a PTO pump. And a PTO pump for a backhoe just goes on the back, you engage your PTO, and instead of running your tractor wide open and working that hydraulic pump all the time, you're running your PTO. And tractors are designed to run generators or whatever wide open speeds for hours on end, no damage to them at all. So with a backhoe with a PTO mounted pump, you can just run that PTO all the time, run your backhoe all day long, and the tractor 
wasn't damaged at all. So that's really a better way. And, and back when I worked in the dealership world, it uh, cost about $1,000 extra to get a PTO pump. I'm sure they're probably double that now, but it was a better way to plumb uh, backhoe into a tractor. So that's my experience with PTO pumps. Now, I've run into people all the time on this website, and that's why I want to ask you, if you've had experience with PTO pumps powering other attachments, I'd like you to put it in the comments down below and help Jason out and help me out understand what people do, because there's a lot of, like there's uh, front-mounted attachments that like cut pond banks and they need hydraulic flow because they're, they're spinning a, a motor uh, with, for the blades with, with hydraulics. Uh, there's, uh, oh, there's front-mounted um, augers that, that need continual PTO flow. And I'm sure there's somebody out there uh, that has plumbed something like that into a PTO-mounted pump and then run the hoses all the way to the front of the tractor and all the way back versus trying to tap into the tractor's hydraulic system and uh, really uh, pushing the pump to its limits. And uh, Jason, all I know is PTO pumps, I'm a big fan of them in their place. A great way to power a hydraulic powered attachment. If you don't have the flow or the pressure you need on your tractor, on your tractor's hydraulic pump and you, and you require that uh, to the attachment, or if you don't have hyd uh, remote hydraulics and you, you're looking for the most economical way of doing that, uh, that that's good too. Uh, but I've not had practical experience doing that. Uh, again, you will have to have a reservoir where you hold the oil and you want some kind of filtration system. But if you get a PTO pump and get that all plumbed together with the right pressure and, and the right uh, flow, I don't see why something like that wouldn't work. And on this attachment Jason's talking about, I wouldn't think you'd use a lot of hydraulic flow for that. It would be something that uh, it wouldn't heat up your tractor's hydraulic system or, or, or require a whole lot of flow because you're just picking up a log and moving it over and then you're, you're gone. And there are people that sell uh, three-point mounted uh, hydraulic pumps uh, that uh, have reservoirs with them. They're pretty pricey. I, the ones I looked at were anywhere from 22 to 100 to around $3,000 a piece. And the bad thing about that, it does tie up your three-point, and if you're pulling a trailer that you've got logs on, that, that isn't going to work together too well. But if you've got knowledge of a better way, please put it in the comments down below, and then I'll know about it and help anybody else out that writes in about it, and Jason will as well. I appreciate you watching my videos. I'd be honored if you would subscribe to my YouTube channel, and that's real easy to do. Just click the Mike Face icon and check the bell so you get notified when I post future videos. Here's a link to my website and the Tractor Fun Store with cool things for sale for the tractor owner that helps support my channel. And here's another couple of videos you might want to watch. Thanks for watching.